Well, hello and welcome again to another Bible study session of Feel the Fire Live broadcast on YouTube. Glad to have you tonight with me, Harvest Center family and all believers and all people from around the world. We're glad to have you with us tonight for another Bible study session of the Word of God as we're about to transition into 2023. We give God praise for who He is, what He's doing, and He's going to be glorified even the more through the Word of the Lord tonight. So my prayer is that you get your pad, your pencil, let's take some notes, write down some things because we're going to go into the Word tonight as if to share with you and a subject that you don't hear much about, but I believe it's needed for the time in which we live. Why? Because as we approach the finish line of the church age, when I say the finish line, that the church age is about to come to a close, God wants us to be ready. God don't want us to miss out. And I want you to know the enemy will try to deceive us if we're not careful. Amen. So we've got to watch out for those seducing spirits, those doctrines of devils, false teachings, false leaders. We got to watch out for it because the purpose of them is just to deceive, uh, to deceive us and to get us off track with God so that we can miss the blessings of God in eternity. So tonight, we're going to talk about hell tonight. We're going to look at the subject of hell, that the Bible, what the Bible says about it, and so that we can be enlightened, we can be prepared ourselves, and we can help prepare others that they not end up in this place called hell. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We thank you, Father, that you're sending your word to heal us and to deliver us from destruction. Now, I pray, Father, that those that hear tonight, God, that they will have an ear to hear and an understanding heart. Father, I bless the people tonight with truth. I bless them with revelation and understanding of the word. God, that you be glorified. And Father, that many that are on that road to hell, that are on that road to destruction, They'll make a decision. They're going to change. They'll make a decision. They're going to follow Jesus Christ, the narrow way that leads to life. Father, I claim a harvest tonight that you be glorified. Let the truth of the word go forth. God, that healing go forth through the word tonight, understanding and clarity, that you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you tonight, and we thank God again for our prayer warrior team. Man, I thank God for the prayer warriors. I want to give a big shout out to all our prayer call leaders. May the Lord bless you. Do not be weary in well-doing. You're doing a great work. Don't stop. Don't come down. Don't listen to the enemy. Stay steadfast and move and unmovable because I believe that we're in due season. This is due season. 2023 was going to be the escalation and the acceleration of our due season. And we're going to reap if we don't faint. Amen. So tonight, I want to, we're going to look at, we're going to use for a subject, the reality of hell. You know, I haven't taught on hell in many years, but the Holy Spirit really put this on my heart that, 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 that it needs to be exposed because this too is a part of the apostles doctrine. Hell is a part of the apostles doctrine. Don't you know that Jesus taught more about hell than he did about heaven? He had more to say about hell. He told stories about hell and, and people who went to hell and he, and he described what, what, why was hell created? He had more to say about hell than he did about heaven. Why? Because Jesus came the first time to deliver us from the place of hell and destruction. He came to lay his life down, to die on that cross and shed his blood, rose from the dead, that we might have life and have it more abundantly in this life and the world now and in eternity. Jesus came to deliver us from the place of destruction. Okay, so in Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, we're going to launch this tonight. We're going to talk about the reality of hell that hell is a real place. You see, because God wants the world as well as the church to know that hell is real. Hell is a real place. That God is a God of love, but God is a God of wrath and a God of judgment. And God created hell for the devil and his angels. He didn't create hell for us. He didn't create hell for man. He created hell for Satan, who was once Lucifer, who became Satan. And he created hell as a prison, as a place of torment for all those angels that followed Lucifer. That one third that followed Lucifer, hell was created for Lucifer and his fallen angel, not for man. But I want you to know man who live for the devil, live like the devil, who follow Satan, who follow evil, who live evil and follow wickedness, will end up in the place called hell. Now, Jesus gives us a story here in Luke chapter 16, and I want to pick it up at verse 22, and we're going to read 22 through 25. Lord, we thank you for the word. Bless it tonight, and let it be enlightening, let it be revelation, let it be strength to your people in Jesus' name. Okay, Luke chapter 16, verse, uh, let's start with verse 19. It says, there was a rich man that was clothed with purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. 
and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus was laid at the gate, at his gate full of sores, designed to be fed with the crumb which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the, do the dogs came and licked his sores. So here we got a millionaire, we would call him a millionaire, a rich man. He had a lot of money. He had a big mansion. He, he had all the provisions, material provisions that, he, that a person would need, but he did not have God. He did not follow God. He, 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 he forgot God because he got caught up in his riches. He got caught up in his life and he caught up in himself. Folks, this is happening with a lot of people today. Amen. They get so captivated by their wealth. They get so captivated. They put their trust in their money. They put their trust in their money other than put their trust in God. And, 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 and Jesus still gives the story of a rich man and a beggar, a rich man and a poor man. Okay. The poor man had abundance. The poor man lived for the lived for pleasure. The poor man lived for his riches. But there was a beggar named Lazarus that laid at his gate full of swords. Now, this is not Lazarus that Jesus rose from the dead. This is another man named Lazarus that Jesus is using in the story here. And the Bible says he was full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumb that's fed from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass, verse 22, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23 says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, this, this is the description of hell under the Old Covenant. Under the Old Covenant, hell was divided in two parts. It was Abraham's bosom, and it was the torment or the fire side of hell. When the, when the rich man died, he lifted up his eyes in hell. But when, 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 the, when the poor man died, he went to Abraham's bosom which was a place of paradise, which was a place of comfort, which was a place of eternity with God. You see, because, uh, because of the riches that the rich man had, he allowed his riches to cause him to go to hell. He caused his riches to be in God's place. That's why, folks, if, if you are wealthy, don't let that wealth become, become God in your life. Amen. Don't, that, don't, don't, don't put all your trust in that wealth because a lot of people are doing that today. Okay? Don't be like the rich man. Okay, but be like Lazarus. Now, I'm not telling you you're supposed to be poor and be full of sores, but be like Lazarus who trusted God. Be like Lazarus who put his trust in God. Okay, and he ended up in, La in Abraham's bosom. And Abraham's bosom was the, was, the, was the pleasant side. It was the paradise side of hell because there was a great gulf fixed between them, as we're going to see as we continue to read. The Bible says in verse 23, And in hell lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, who cried? The rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Send Lazarus that he may dip his tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am tormented in this flame. So a hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of flame. It's a place of fire. It's a place where a person, a person burns for eternity. That's why my prayer is that this teaching tonight will, will divert somebody away from hell, that you will not want to go to hell, and that you will do the things that will keep you out of hell. Why? Because Jesus came the first time to deliver us from this place of destruction. Jesus is letting us know here, folks, that there is a place called an eternal hell that God has created for the devil and his angels. But people who live contrary to the will of God, live for themselves, live in disobedience, live wickedly, end up in hell. And sad part about it, most people, a lot of people go to hell every day when they die without Christ. Amen? Folks, God doesn't want anybody to be lost, but he wants all to come to repentance. And my prayer is that you, if you've been living this wicked life, you've been living for yourself, you've got money and you've been trusting in your money, start putting your trust in God. Amen? Why? Because hell is what? What is where this rich man lifted up his eyes. So this tells me when a person dies in this world, they wake up in another world. They lift up their eyes in either hell or they lift up their eyes in paradise and in the presence of God. My prayer is tonight that you leave this earth, if you leave this earth in death, that you lift up your eyes in the presence of God and not in hell, like the rich man did. Now here he's in hell, verse 24. He cried saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, send Elijah, that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. In other words, hell is a place where there's no water. Man, can you imagine being in a place where there's no water? 
for eternity. He said that, that, I, that he may cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame. Hell is a place of burning. Hell is a place of flame. Hell is a place of eternal destruction. And God does not want anybody in hell. Hell is a real place. I said hell is a real place. We got to know that. And we're going to illustrate it and show you from, from, from a scientific fact that hell is real. Uh, but Abraham said, verse 25, uh, son, remember. In other words, the rich man went to hell, but he had his memory. He remembered something. Remember that thou in thy lifetime received that thou good things and last is evil things. But now he is comforted and now thou art tormented. In other words, you got it. we got to make it right on this side, folks. Because when we die in this world, we're going to open up our eyes in another world. And it's either going to be in the presence of God and the angels, or it's going to be in hell with the devil and his demons. Amen? That's where the, that's where the rich man ended up. We're talking about the reality of hell tonight. Okay? And in verse 20, 20 26, Abraham went on to tell the rich man, and, and, and beside all this, between you, between, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us which would come from there. Then he said, I pray there, uh, therefore, uh, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, and may I testify unto them, lest they come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if, if, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto, un, unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will, will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Don't you know what Abraham was saying is so true? In other words, the rich man says, I got five brothers. He says, send Elijah to my brother's house so that he could testify to them and tell them, don't come to this place. You see, he did not. hell is a place you don't want your relatives. Hell is a place you don't want anybody you love. You don't want them in hell. You see, but Abraham told him. Abraham said, no, I'm not sending Elijah. He said, let them believe the prophets, Moses and the prophets. Let them believe the words of the spirit. Of, of, the, of the messengers of God on the earth because if they don't believe their message they won't believe us if one rock rose from the dead and don't you know that's the truth Jesus Christ has risen from the dead he's sitting at the right hand of God he's died on that cross he's risen from the dead and people still don't believe in Jesus people still don't believe that there's a hell even though Jesus Christ has rose from the dead and we're preaching his death burial and resurrection for the salvation of the soul glory to God so what what we want to see here is that hell is a real place and people die without God they end up in hell a amen well, okay now now let's look at this let's take this a little bit further let's go to Matthew Matthew chapter 25 hallelujah thank God for the word tonight follow me in the word tonight we're gonna to look at some things uh, that's gonna really help us to understand the subject you see because folks the, um, the, the American church has failed to tell people the truth about hell the, the American ch church has failed to teach this message why because this is a part of the Apostles doctrine and the devil don't want people to know the reality of hell but I want you to know it's a real place and we need to know how to avoid and to escape eternal damnation and separation from God in this place called hell okay uh, Matthew chapter 25 and let's look at verse 41 Matthew 25 41 still Jesus talking about hell like I told you Jesus had more to say about hell than he did about heaven okay he said then shall they say unto them on the left depart from me ye curse in the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels notice Jesus said hell is an everlasting fire but it's prepared for the devil and his angels God created hell the fire that's in the center of this earth as an eternal place of punishment for Satan and his demons that followed him or his, or, or his fallen angels. Hell is a play, place prepared for the devil and his angels. Not for man, but men will go there where they reject and re they resist the presence of Jesus Christ. They resist the plan of salvation. And God wants us to be delivered from the place called hell. He didn't create it for us, folks. But I want you to know, hell is a real place. Now I'm going to <clears throat> go, go back to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, where God spoke concerning this place called hell and what God had to say about it. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody tell him thank you tonight. Let me let me do, do it on this device right here. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We're going to Deuteronomy 
chapter 32. We're going to see what the Father had to say about hell. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, apple cider vinegar, a little water, and lemon juice. Amen. Good cleanser. I drink this every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Keeps your throat lubricated. It keeps sickness and disease out of your body. Okay. Deuteronomy 32. And let's look at verse number 22. Deuteronomy 32. Look at what God said about hell in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 32, 22. He said, For a fire is kindled in my anger, and it shall burn unto the lowest hell, and it shall consume the earth with her increase, and shall set on fire the foundation of the mountains. Other words, God created hell in his anger against Satan, against Lucifer, who fell because of his pride and took one third of God's angels with him. God created hell as a place of torment, as a prison for, for Satan and his angels. And he says here, he said, a, a fire is kindled in my anger, and it shall burn into the lowest hell. In other words, there's a fire burning into the, in, into the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with their increase. What's happening? This earth is being consumed from the inside. The fire is burning in the center of this earth. I want you to know hell is a scientific fact, and scientists know that there's a fire in the center of the earth. You see, then that fire is, is a place called hell, because God said he created it in his anger. It shall burn into the Lord's hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase. In other words, the more the earth increases on its surface, more people prosper, more people uh, do what they want to do. Uh, he said, hell consume, is consuming the earth from the inside. This earth is, des is destroying itself from the inside because of the fire called hell. He said, consume the earth with their increase it's just, and, it's set, and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. Now, now consider this. The foundation of the mountains are being burned away. The, the foundation of mountains are being melted. With the, with the intense heat that's in the, in the center of this earth. I don't believe there's no thermometer that can measure the temperature of the volcanic uh, lava that's that's melted rock in the center of this earth. It's because right now there are, there are volcanoes that are erupting in Hawaii. There are like about four major volcanoes that's been erupting. One's been erupting since uh, September 29th, 2021. That, 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 that volcano's been erupting. And the Bible says it, it will burn away the foundation of the mountains. That's what he said in Deuteronomy 32, 22. It burns away the foundation of the mountains. So this is why Jesus said earthquakes will increase. Earthquakes are increasing. Why? Because when the foundation of a mountain is burned away, it's melted, the mountain will sink, causing an earthquake. And, and, and an earthquake will cause also a tsunami. And that earthquake that happened in uh, California on this past Tuesday, that 6.4 that hit the coast of California, they're they're worrying and they're concerned now about a tsunami. Now, what a tsunami is is when there's an earthquake under the ocean. When an earthquake takes place under the ocean, it causes the a tsunami. A tsunami is when the when the surface of the ocean raises up, whether it's a half inch, the surface of the ocean can raise up a half inch, and it will push all that water on the land and that's what a tsunami is but a tsunami is caused by uh, the fire that's in the center of this earth that's burning away the mountains causing the mountains to shake hey, amen and we're going to look at that from the scriptures that that volcanoes are mentioned in the scriptures all those they're not called volcanoes but 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 tsunamis are caused by an a uh, tsunami is an earthquake under the ocean and when the earth's surface under the ocean moves up it pushes all that water on the land. And that's what a tsunami is. It could flood a city. It could wipe out a whole state. Amen. And that's what the threat is right now for the state of California. That a, that a tsunami could hit California and the whole state of California could be underwater. Amen. Why? Because when the earth's surface rises up, it pushes that water on the land. It causes a tsunami. But what's causing a tsunami? What's causing the earthquake? is the fire that's in the center of the earth that's burning away the foundation of the mountain. Scientists know it, but they want to keep it covered up. They don't want to tell you that it's, it's, it's a place called hell that's burning in the center of this earth. Folks, it's happening. Volcanoes are erupting. Volcanoes are erupting all over the earth, and especially in Hawaii. 
Hawaii, uh, the major volcanoes that have been erupting, and that lava is running down this, around this mountainside, and that lava is the foundation that mountains that would support the mountain, and is causing the earthquakes. Folks, there is a place called hell, and it's a place that God created for the devil and his angels, and he doesn't want mankind to be there. He doesn't want us to end up in hell. Why? Because he sent Jesus to die on that cross. Well, we have to receive him as Savior and Lord to keep us out of that place of destruction. Can you say amen to that? Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ that came to deliver us from hell and destruction. Okay, Psalms 46. Go with me to Psalms 46. Let's look at the scriptural foundation for a volcano. The scriptural foundation for a volcano is in Psalms 46. See, the scientists, they study volcanoes, and they talk about volcanoes, and, and then people folks taking pictures of volcanoes. But I want you to know, volcanoes are a sign that hell is a reality, that hell is real. Why? Because the fire that's in the center of this earth, that's melting the very rocks that support the mountains. Okay, Psalms 46. Look at what it says here. Uh, uh, God is our refuge and strength. Oh, glory to God, he is. Uh, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, and there's a, there's a river, the stream make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and he, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. But I want to go back to uh, uh, verse, ver, ver, verse number three. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. The mountains shaking with the swelling thereof has to do with a volcanic eruption that the pressure from the molten rock gets so, 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 in, so intense in that mountain that the mountain actually swells. The mountain actually begins to swell because heat makes things swell. Heat makes things expand. So the mountain swelling is, 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 is almost like the, 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 the volcano is almost like you're blowing up a balloon. And if you keep blowing that balloon up, that balloon swells and it swells and it swells. And all of a sudden, pop, it, it bursts. That balloon will burst. Just, just like the eruption of a volcano. The mountain will swell. And as it swells, it shakes. Glory to God. What happens in an earthquake? What's shaking? Amen. I remember my brother, he, he, was, uh, he was out in Alaska. He lived out there for several years, around 1975. And he'd always write me back. And, and uh, he played in a band. And they used to play, the, play in the club uh, right before he got saved. And they, and they used to play this old song by the Temptations, Standing on Shaky Ground. Amen. You know, standing on shaky ground. Every percent you put me down. Something like that. But they, he would say, man, he said, the ground out here in Alaska is always shaking. He said, we play that song every night in the club, standing on shaky ground. Why? Because the, the, the burning away of the fountain, uh, of the mountain's foundation caused the mountains to swell and shakes the earth. And that's what an earthquake that happens in an earthquake. It shakes the earth. But what causes an earthquake? What causes a volcanic eruption? But the fire of hell is burning in the center of this earth, folks. Hell is a reality. They know it. They will not tell you the truth about it hell they're calling it global warming and they're trying to remedy global warming and global warming is no more than the fire of hell is burning in the center of this earth you want to really know what global warning warming is global warming is because the fire is burning in the center of this earth it's burning away the foundation of the mountains it's melting the ice of the glaciers in the northern hemisphere and that water from those glaciers some of it's running down in the valley into the ocean and into the rivers but a lot of it's being vaporized up into the atmosphere why because the the, the the glaciers are melting folks the the ice the big mountains of ice are being melted because of the internal fire that's heating up this earth from the inside because of the reality of hell and you see this is why a strange weather patterns and the, and this this christmas season man they're talking about cold like we've never experienced cold before amen and the summers are being hotter than they ever were before why because this earth is heating up from the inside now 
Uh, now, now scientists, uh, political leaders, they're saying global warming is because of exhaust emissions in the atmosphere that's coming from the cars. Let me tell you something, global warming does not come from exhaust fumes. And you see, this is why this big push, the electric cars, they said, if we could stop putting all this, this exhaust fume, this carbon monoxide in the atmosphere, we could stop global warming. Folks, they can't stop global warming because global, global warming is not coming from exhaust fume. It's coming because there's a fire in the center of this earth. Amen. And, and, and once we understand that, all we need to do is call for repentance. Amen. The only remedy is to call and bring people to repentance, tell people to turn to God because you cannot stop what's happening in the center of this earth. Man can't stop it. And you see, and this is why the, the Tesla and all these guys, the electric cars, oh, let's, let's, just make, let's just stop putting all these exhaust fumes in the earth. Hey, it's got nothing to do with global, global warming. It's not why this planet is heating up. This planet is heating up because there's a fire in the center of this earth called hell. You want to know what global warming is? It's because there's a hell burning in the center of this earth. Glory to God. And man can't stop it. And God has ordained it. And, and, and the only thing man can do is to come to know Jesus Christ in a real way. And, 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 and the mountains shaking with the swelling thereof. But the Bible said, but there's a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God. Hallelujah. In other words, that river is the river of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We get tied up. We get connected to the river. We get delivered from hell. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is our refuge and strength. Verse 1, Psalms 46, 1. God must be our refuge and strength, folks. Most of this world is not turning to God. Most of this world is turning to their money, turning to themselves. They got themselves on the throne. They're idols. Well, God must be our refuge. The way that we get delivered from this place called hell is we've got to put God first, folks. We've got to come back to God. America must come back to God. Church leaders must come back to God. Thank God for our remnant that's preaching the truth, telling people what they need to know. And God's going to be glorified for those who uh, would heed the warning. And, and, and we must tell the church and the world the reality of hell. Why? Because God did not create hell for us, but he created hell for the devil and his angels. Okay? So hell is real. I came to tell you tonight, hell is real. But that's why. That's why he's having us teach this. Why? Because the church has not been telling the people the truth. The devil wants to keep this covered up. He don't want you to know the truth. He wants you to think that global warming is coming from exhaust fumes, which is not. Oh man, it's not coming from no exhaust fumes. It's coming because there's a fire in the center of this earth and it's melting the very foundation of the mountains. And the sad part about it, people go there every day who die without God. People go there every day who die without God. Okay, who is going to hell? The unrepentant is going to hell. The abominable is going to hell. Those who live wickedly will go to hell if they stay in that wicked state. I'm headed to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 21, because Revelation 21 tells us who is going to hell. Then we're going to tell you how to escape. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 21, who, who will end up in hell? Anyone who continues to live an evil lifestyle, who lives for themselves and live a wicked lifestyle, forgetting God, for the Bible says, the nation that forget God shall be turned into hell. I hope you're not forgetting God in your life, like most of the world is. They're forgetting God and they're living their lives based on their own choices and their own decisions. If you forget God, you can end up in hell. Hallelujah. But the only way to avoid hell is to turn to Jesus Christ in repentance and live a holy lifestyle. You see, you got to live holy. Amen. You got to live clean before God. Right, man? Amen. The Bible said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Amen. You got to live holy. You got to live holy. That's why you, That's why this same-sex marriage, this, this perversion and all this stuff that's happening in the earth, we got to sound the alarm, folks, because there's a hell that's burning. And for God wants the God, God, God wants the perverted person to be delivered from that perverted lifestyle so that they do not spend eternity in hell. Who will end up in hell? Revelation 21, 8 tells us. He says, but the fearful and the unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire and the lake which burned with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. In other words, the second death is death in the lake of fire, eternal death. There's physical death and there's eternal death. You see, because we could die once and we don't have to die no more. But you could die once and then die the second death and then you can end up in hell. Jesus came 
that we may only have to die once physically and not die that second death because the second death is to spend eternity in the lake of fire let's see who, who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna end up in hell he said the fearful that's why we got to get rid of fear folks you got to get rid of all of your fears you cannot be afraid of anything you cannot fear anything but god amen have the fear of god it'll deliver you from all other fears the fearful don't be afraid of man don't be afraid of the society don't be afraid of to live don't be afraid of the other race don't be afraid of anything don't be afraid of dying don't be afraid of sickness don't be afraid of disease you got to get rid of fear why because the bible says here the fearful number one is the fearful because the fearful are not the faithful amen he said the fearful the unbelieving we got to believe this bible we got to believe all of the new testament we got to believe what what the word of god has for us to believe we got to believe all that jesus did and taught we got to be willing to be doers of all he taught because if we believe it we'll do it i speak in tongues i pray in the spirit because i believe it amen you see because we got, got a, a lot of unbelieving believers i'm talking to you bishop i'm talking to you pastors amen you you teach people talk about the by the holy spirit and the gifts of the spirit don't operate today that's a lie that's unbelieving you're teaching people to be unbelievers because the bible says the unbelieving because if you don't believe in the fullness of the holy spirit how can you obey the holy spirit and if you can't obey the holy spirit it's a sign that you forgetting god amen because he's god the holy ghost Amen. And the Bible says, if any man have not the Spirit of God, he's not of his. Romans chapter 8, round verse 9. You know, we, we've got to, we got to obey and be led by the Spirit of God. we got to believe because all things are possible if you believe. Glory to God. He says, the unbelieving, the abominable. That means those who live wickedly, those who live for the weekend, those who live the party lifestyle, those who are into pornography, and those who do the detestable things. And these are all enemies of God. Amen. The abominable, murderers. Amen. That people who take people's lives senselessly, people who hate other people. The Bible calls them murderers. In other words, who's going to hell? All murderers go to hell if you don't repent. Repentance is the only thing that will deliver us from being an unbeliever, being fearful, being abominable. Then he says, who among us? Whoremongers, I, I believe, are uh, people, and I believe basically men who just go from women to women. They're womanizers. They're, 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 they're just, they're, they're just, they're just uh, sexually perverted. They're sexually driven. Amen. Whoremongers. Amen. Amen. We call uh, uh, women, women are, women are, are harlots, but men are whoremongers. In other words, if you are whoremonger, sir, you better stop that because that's the type of people that land up in hell. He, he, uh, sexual sin outside of marriage. I'm talking about fornication, having sex with somebody that you're not married to, adultery, having sex and you know that you're married, or having sex with somebody and you know that you're married, you're having sex outside of your, of your marriage with someone and you're married, adultery. Adultery is, it, 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 it is abominable to God. Fornication is abominable. Perversion. Amen. Sexual sin, uh, 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 homosexual lifestyle, lesbian lifestyle. Amen. That, that's abominable to God. These are the people that will end up with, in hell if they don't repent and turn to Jesus Christ with all of their heart. The Bible says that sorcerers, sorcerers are those who depend on drugs, those who, those who live by live by chemicals and, and, and just cause uh, use portions or, or drugs to, to numb their senses, uh, to make them intoxicated, make them drunk, make them high. In other words, other words, if you are a sorcerer, if you're a drug dealer, you position yourself to end up in hell. Sexual sin positions us. Sexual sin is the road to hell if you don't don't repent. Okay, uh, sorcery, drug dealing, a amen. Uh, pharmakia, amen. Sorcery, God hates sorcery. That means that means the witch doctor. That means the warlock. That means the witch. That means the root worker, amen. That's the card reader, the psychic, are all sorcerers, amen. And God says they will have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. Revelation twenty one eight tells us who will end up in hell, folks. God didn't create hell for us. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the truth. I thank God for exposing the reality of hell so that you and I can spend eternity with God. Eternity with heaven on earth because heaven's coming to earth, folks, because the opposite of hell is eternity with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Eternity with God is what we want. And eternity with God is described in Revelation 21 and verse 1. John said, I saw a new heaven 
and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more seas. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned before her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. He will dwell with them. He will be their people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Right, for these words are true and faithful. That's the eternity that God has for you and I. Hallelujah. That we can eat the fruit of the tree of life. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nation. This is what God requires. This is what God desires for us folks, for every person on planet earth, that we spend eternity with God and not in a place called hell and of hell and destruction. Because it's there, it's a reality. And we've got to know that we must choose life. We must choose eternity with God over eternity separated from God. And that comes through choosing the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that there's a remnant that's preaching the truth. I believe that there's a handful of people that God is well pleased with, that we're telling people what they need to hear in this time so that they can be without excuse and they can choose life or they can choose death. You see, because folks, a person goes to hell based on their choice. God don't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell because of making the choice to serve the devil, to serve themselves and to forget God. That's what will send you to hell. But folks, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and you will have it more abundantly. But when we choose Jesus, glory to God, we make him the Lord of our life, glory to God, and then he can be our savior. We live for him with all that's in us. And folks, that's what it's going to require. We got to live for God with everything that's in us because we've got to live a holy lifestyle. And then we can spend eternity in this place where the Bible says there'll be no more pain, no more sickness, no more crying, no more tears. Glory to God, because all these things will be passed away. But Jesus Christ brings the new Jerusalem and set it up on this earth. He's going to have to wipe the devil off at first. And then he's going to set up a thousand year reign of Christ on this earth. That's what God wants for us. Eternity with God and not eternity separated from God. Hell is a reality. My prayer is that you choose to live and spend eternity with God. And that comes through knowing Jesus Christ and following the truth of God's word and knowing the Holy Spirit in a real way, living that holy lifestyle and God's going to be glorified through your life. Then you'll spend eternity with God and not eternity separated from God. If you don't know Jesus Christ tonight, if you're backslidden, if you used to live for God, folks, it's time to come back. It's time to, for the prodigals to return to God. He said, what are you talking about? You used to be on fire for God. You used to love God. You used to love the church. You used to love the word of God. But now you find yourself living a lifestyle that you know is not right. That you know is not pleasing to God. My prayers, my petition to you is make the decision to come back to God. You remember the prodigal son? He left the father's house. He went out, wasted everything that he had. Riotous living. But he came to himself when he found himself eating with the pigs. Folks, stop eating with the pigs tonight. Your father is rich. He has much blessing for you. Come on back home to God. Backsliders, come on back home. Amen. And if you don't know him as your savior, pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing me to hear this message on hell. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I repent tonight and I come to Jesus Christ. Come on, say, I come to Jesus Christ because I, come on, say it, because I want to spend eternity with the Lord and enjoy the blessings of heaven and I do not want to go to hell. Receive me, Jesus. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose from the dead and tonight I receive you as my Savior. Now, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill me with your power so that I can live this life and be pleasing to you in Jesus name my friend if you pray that prayer tonight from a sincere heart the miracle of all miracles the miracle of the new birth this took place in your heart and I want to pray that God will fill you with the Holy Spirit let's stretch my hands towards you stretch your hands toward mine 
Father, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon my sister. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon my brother tonight. Oh, fill him with the Holy Ghost. Touch him with the fire of God. Send that angel right into that room, God, and give him a supernatural experience. Let the tongues of heaven come up out of his, out of his, out of his throat, out of his mouth, out of his voice. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, just begin to speak in other tongues right there. The Holy Ghost is giving you that utterance. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is, is the ability to live holy. You've got to be filled with holiness. And that means filled with the Holy Spirit. And the overflow of the Holy Ghost is speaking with other tongues. Come on now, pray in tongues. Keep praying in tongues. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. God, I pray that you use them tonight for your glory. God, that they'll stay on the narrow path that leads to life. And Father, I thank you for those that got off the wide and the broad way that leads to destruction. And God, that they'll never go back to the old lifestyle. I bless them tonight with eternity with you and a lifestyle that will please you on this earth. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. My friend, this is the greatest experience that anyone can have, especially as we go into 2023. Amen. Amen. We're about to transition into 2023. And there, you got to leave that old lifestyle behind in 2023. You got to leave the old ways behind. And don't take that into 23. Take the new lifestyle in Christ with you and live that new life. You like the new better than the old you. I love the new me better than the old me. The old me used to drink, used to, used to run around, used to, used to lie, cheat, steal, do all kinds of things. I like the old me that's righteous that's holy, that's true, that's loving God. You like to do you better than the old. Your life will just start now that you've accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. Get into the word. My prayer is that you'll have a hunger for the word. Read your Bible. Ask God to show you to stay with teachings like this. Amen. And if you don't have a church, I'll be, I will let, let the Field of Fire broadcast be your, be your online church. Amen. That you can get fed the word of God because we put up videos every week, amen, and we have an online church that we've already started. You can be a part of our online ministry, and God's going to be glorified through your life. you got to build your life now. I believe we build the church by building the people, and the way we build the people is by feeding them the Word of God, and you got to feed yourself the Word of God. May the Lord bless you. May have a smile on you, and may 2023 be a victorious life, a victorious year for you, and a new life that you will begin. Amen. On this, in these last few days of 2022, may the Lord bless you because 2023, we're going to see the power and the move of God like we've never seen it before. The glory of God is going to hit the planet Earth through the remnant church that God has been raising up and preparing over these last three years through COVID, through all of what's happening. He's prepared a body of believers that's going to be walking in the power and the glory of God and miracles, signs, and wonders are going to hit planet Earth like we've never seen it before, starting 2023. You want to be a part of that. Amen? And God's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. So if you want to support us financially, go to our website, theharvestcenter.com. Go to our website, theharvestcenter.com. Follow the prompts there, and you can sow in to some good ground. Sow financially, because I always say, sow where you grow. If, you, if, if the teaching is helping you to understand, you're helping you to mature, helping you to grow spiritually, I believe you need to sow where you grow. Amen. And until the next video, may the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May the strength of God be yours. In Jesus' name, and may you live for God and that you be determined that you're going to spend eternity with God. And you're going to tell others about this Jesus Christ, His love, and His life-changing experience that comes through the new, new birth. Now, you need to be a witness. Now, if you've accepted Jesus Christ tonight, you need to tell somebody that you got some confidence in, somebody that understands what you're talking about. Tell somebody that you've accepted Jesus Christ and you've asked him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Then you will have started your witness. That's why he said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Acts 1-8. That's what he wants you to do. Tell somebody about this new life. That's what I'm doing tonight. I'm telling others about this new life. Why? Because I don't want them to go to hell. But I want them to spend eternity with God. And God wants that for all mankind. May the Lord bless you. Until the next video. we got some good videos coming up in 2023. And uh, uh, 
tune in to us on this pa- on this coming Sunday night. This coming Sunday night, we'll be teaching some more on why Jesus came to the earth. This Sunday night, Field of Fire Live at 7.30 this Sunday night, right here. Just put in Field of Fire, or Rufus L. Small's Field of Fire, and then you'll tune in to us this Sunday night at 7.30 for Field of Fire Live. May the Lord bless you. May you have a great rest of the night, and may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.